the name of Jesus. Why is Jesus' name so special? History tells us the name Jesus was a common name long before he was born. According to Josephus, the Jewish historian of the first century, many in the high priest families, including those who rebuilt the temple in Jerusalem hundreds of years before, were named Jesus. In his Antiquities, Josephus writes about Moses leading the Jews out of their 400-year captivity in Egypt. And I quote, So Moses sorted all that were fit for war into different troops and set Joshua, the son of Nun, of the tribe of Ephraim, over them. The name of Jesus is a form of the Hebrew name of the Exodus hero, Joshua. You can see why this name is popular, especially among Jews and Christians, too. Anyone listening today named Joshua? Anyone named Jesus? We get our English word Jesus from the Greek spelling J-E-S-O-U-S. -S. The Hebrew term for Jesus is Yeshua, a name closely related to Yahashua, Joshua. Both names mean God will save. It explains who Jesus is and what he came to do. We see this in the message the angel Gabriel delivered to both Mary and Joseph. Luke chapter 1, verse 28 and 31. And the angel came to Mary and said, Behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Matthew chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. The angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Mary shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. There's more to this name. Three days before that first Easter, Pilate was seeking a way to set Jesus free. His plan was to offer the people a deal, a trade. He offered to release one Jewish prisoner, as was the custom on the Passover. He selected with purpose a man named Barabbas. He felt certain of the outcome, that Jesus would be freed. Let's take a closer look at Barabbas. Some ancient biblical manuscripts refer to him as Jesus Barabbas. Some scholars believe the church fathers of the third century didn't want to include that name with the Lord's name, so they used only his last name, Barabbas. Now the name Barabbas itself is meaningful. Bar means son of, and Abbas means father, thus son of the father. The Bible gives a clue to this man's character. In Matthew 27, 16, Barabbas is called a notorious prisoner. In Mark 15, 7 and in Luke 23, 19, we read he was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder and that he was involved with an insurrection against the Roman military. In Acts 3, 13 to 15, Peter says clearly he was a murderer. In John 18, 40, he is described as a robber, a bandit. Certainly this would not make him popular with the Jewish people. Historical records show these types of rebels often robbed innocent Jews to maintain their supplies. So we see how this name Barabbas, son of the father, reflects whose influence was over Barabbas' life. It is the same influence over a group of belligerent Pharisees. And Jesus said to them, John chapter 8, verse 44. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Jesus is the son of his father. 
the God of heaven and earth and of all things. In John 10.30, Jesus says, I and my Father are one. Acts 10.38 says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And how Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Because God was with him. What a contrast between these two men. Surely the crowd would see these two sons of their fathers and choose the one who had done only good things for them. Matthew chapter 27, verse 17. So when the people gathered together, Pilate, the governor, said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? Pilate couldn't have known the deeper truth here, but we see it more clearly. Of these two men, who do you want me to release to you? Jesus, Barabbas, the son of his father, or Jesus called the Christ, the son of his father? The people chose Barabbas and shouted that Jesus be put to death. This was predicted in Isaiah 53.3. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. We esteemed him not. That includes all of us. Since Adam and Eve sinned, people have continually rejected God's Son. Why? because all people have sin in their hearts. What that crowd did to God's Son that day, sinners have been doing throughout the ages. We all drove the nail into Jesus' hands and feet. As Pilate put forth the choice to the people, their sins blinded their thinking. The Apostle Peter preached about this. Acts chapter 3, verses 13 to 15. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. Most of you know what consequences are. They are the result or the outcome of some action. Sin has consequences. The outcome of sin is death. Death to our spirit, death to our body. Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. You've heard the word payment, haven't you? It's what you receive from your employer. Well, another term for payment is wages. The payment or the wages of sin is death. Praise God, that verse goes on. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Jesus came to save us from the consequences of sin. This means he saves us from the guilt of sin. When we repent, He forgives us and takes away our shame. He saves us from the power of sin. And there is one more way He saves us. He saves us for Himself. We shall be with Him forever. That day, the crowd chose not to receive Christ. Days later, many repented and found grace and mercy from the one they'd denied. Dear ones, there is always a choice, a daily choice we have to make. Joshua's words challenge us today. In Joshua 24, 15, But if serving the Lord seems disagreeable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Is not our Lord most appealing has he not continually done good in our lives? 
When you hear the name of Jesus, you should bow your heart in gratitude before the Lord for his grace and his kindness towards you. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. In his Antiquities, Josephus writes about the one who was called the Christos. Yes, indeed, Jesus the Christ. This name sets Jesus apart from all those others who bear his name. They are not the Christ. None of these have power to answer prayers. They have no power to forgive sins. They have no power to change your heart. They have no power to get you to heaven. Acts 4.12 says we can't be saved any other way except through the name of Jesus Christ, God's holy and anointed Son. This is why His name is so special. This is why we adore Him and praise Him. I'd like to pray with you. Father, at this Easter time, we remember the great plan you had for us to reconcile us back to yourself. That you gave the one you loved so deeply to this earth to suffer and die and to be raised up again so that we could be assured of going to heaven and being with you forever. Thank you, Lord, that there was a choice that day and that the people, though they had been led astray, that they had been blinded, yet many of them, just days later, at the very first sermon preached, came into a faith, came into a repentance, came to know and recognize this Christ, this Son of the living God, was the gift from heaven, the one who would save them from their sins. We thank you, Lord, for coming. We thank you for loving us so much and desiring so much that we would be with you forever. Bless all those today with a fresh look, a fresh anointing to their eyes and their ears and their hearts to be filled with gratitude and praise and thanksgiving and worship do to your precious name, that name above every name. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.